This year has been crazy tight. And you just race for, for 20 minutes and you see that you're like three seconds off of that stage win. In three very short years, the sport's matured massively. People are working it out. In modern civilization's relatively short history, a thousand years is a decently long time. And for nearly 375,000 days, people have lived here in the Spanish Pyrenees. But the mountain bike is a much more recent addition. The bike might be new, but the people here in Spain have taken to it with the same enthusiasm they typically reserve for their coffee and their gazpacho. In a valley where time is marked in centuries, the racers here today are fighting for tenths of a second. And after 40 generations of progress, the second and third steps of the podium here in the Pyrenees were decided in the blink of an eye. It's insane like how tight it is, which is good though. It's really good for the sport and us as racers, it just makes you push and have to be on it that much more. I remember when we first started this whole thing, a lot of people said, uh, that's going to be pointless racing because after one or two stages the racing's going to be over you're going to have a guy 30, 40, 50 seconds in the lead and, and then that'll be it we'll just be watching stage after stage of the same dude winning and I don't think anyone foresaw how close it would be You would never guess that after 25 minutes racing 30 minutes of racing it's going to be that tight Winning and losing today will be decided by the time it takes a heart to beat twice. At the pace of the top pros, 0.1 of a second equals approximately 80 centimeters. Dust off your high school physics calculations and you'll learn that after 14 kilometers of racing, Johan Borelli secured second place by under a meter. Martin Mays locked in third place by little more than the time it takes you to click play. Second stage of crash. Third stage went really well, but got a front flat at the end and had to nurse it across the line. That stage went really well, but had a stupid crash again at the end. Just up and down the weather, you know, crazy day. You only have to like literally push your front wheel off the edge of any one of these turns and then you lose 20 seconds like that. Everybody has a story at the end of the trail and you lose time, you win time, but if you're at the wrong end, sometimes it keeps me awake at night and I'd be like, oh man, I wish I hadn't take that line or, you know, like did something different, but you know, you can't change it anymore. You just try to focus on the next, on the next trail or, or the next day that you have to be out there again and try to be faster. Stage six, probably one of my favorites of the weekend. It's so good. I met a tree on the, on the stage. That didn't feel good, but uh, still had a good time. I think that to win a race, it's going to be like a lot of little things add all together. That's going to make you uh, just crush an event. In enduro, as much as I was doing in downhill, I tried to calculate all the parameters, train all the parameters. People are w working with head cams today and they're learning the track, they're learning the corners, they know what's coming ahead. Uh, they learn how to manage their runs also physically, which is really important. I think next year we're going to see even more guys starting to work it out and the more and more we have this group of riders really looking at tiny percentages, marginal gains, the closer and closer the racing is going to, going to become.
I take seven seconds by Jared Graves, and I think Richie will be leading the stage show. I'm so surprised how well these tracks are riding. It's a ton of fun, man. Let's see what the time says. <laughs> Jared was fifth or sixth going into the last stage, and he had 1.8 seconds to make up or something to get in the second. And he was pretty pissed <laughs> when the stage got canceled because he was going to make up ground and get in the second. There's no doubt. When you race bicycles, you can control your effort and you can control your speed. But there is still no way to control the kind of weather that caused the cancellation of the final stage here in Spain. It was so fun until you got to one section and it was unrideable. It was like on your ass, sliding down, people taking your bike. What the f It was unreal. And after all the scheming and the stressing for tenths of a second, on the top spot of the podium in Zona Zero was an outlier, a decisive victory for the USA's Richie Rood. Reinforcing, perhaps, that for the young American, his time has come. I think we've had 86.9% more descending in this series in the World Cup downhill for the whole year. And yet we're looking at seconds between these guys. How they're so close over such varied terrain in such varied parts of the world, I've no, I've, I've no idea. Baffles me. <laughs> Next on On Track. I felt like we were just here a year ago 